Hello, this is part two of how to replace a capacitor, or at least how I do it. And uh, as a disclaimer, I'm, I'm not an expert or anything, but uh, this is how I've been doing it. And this is the first time I tried to do uh, uh, something like this in real time. So uh, so bear with me here. Uh, okay, so we the first part, we identify the capacitor we want to replace. And now uh, we, we have to get a new capacitor. So I've got these capacitors from JustRadios.com. And the reason I selected um, uh, this gentleman named Dave to, to get the parts from, he's in Canada. And I've been buying all my capacitors from him because he has the old-fashioned values. If it's like a, a .05, and uh, he has like .05s. And uh, he has the original values that came with capacitors. I mean, .05 could be like a new value too. But oftentimes, uh, the new values don't jive with the old values. So I decided to get the capacitors from him because it's really like not much of a thought process because the capacitors are, are the same values as they were uh, in the olden days. And uh, I just buy them and he sends them in, in these bags. So I found the part I needed. It's this one here. And uh, you really can't see this. I don't think it's going to show up on here. But it has a new new code on it. The new code says 503K. And you need a, um, a cheat sheet to figure out that that's really 0.05 microfarads. And this is the cheat sheet that he supplies. And I don't know if it's going to show up here. But you look at the table and you find 0.05. And where's my pointer? Let's use this to point with. You find 0.05 on the table. And that translates to 503K. And I'm using 630 volt ones here. So. I have the right part. Ta -da. And now I'm going to turn the soldering iron on, solder station on. And I have the um, volt ohm meter vacuum tube volt, volt vacuum tube volt meter warming up now. And what I'm going to do is test the new capacitor to make sure it's good. So I clip on one lead here, really nice and tight. And I'm going to grab this one here. And the meter deflects. And then you see it, it goes back up. Well, that's good because I have, I have the, the ohm meter portion on the highest mega ohm uh, value possible. So, what happened was it charged the capacitor up, and then it charged up, and then it became infinite value again. And, and that's what you need to do. Uh, I'll do it again. Well, you can't do it again because see, it charged up. So I could take a take another one here. I'll show you again. Okay, here, here's, a, here's another one. And if you watch the meter, it deflects, and then it charges up back to infinity. And that's good. That's a good capacitor. If it did this and stay down, that would mean the capacitor was shorted. So I always test the, the new capacitors to make sure they're good. And that's how I test them. I don't have a, a capacitor tester per se, but I use the, the ohmmeter to test out the new capacitors. So here's the new one here. And then what I do now is I'm going to tin the soldering iron tip here. And uh, basically I'm just tending the tip, 
because I'm going to be using it. You put a nice coating of solder on it, like here. And then what you do is you you wipe it off on your sponge and you get a nice shiny tip on it like that and uh, you have to do that periodically to kind of preserve your tip so that's kind of cooking there and that's good so now what I gotta do is uh, take out the old capacitor so I'm gonna probably stop this so I can focus the camera and then uh, I'll try to take the cap out so I'm shutting off and then we'll go to part three